The best offense is a good defense. My name's JR, and this is Warframe Built to Destroy. Hey what's up pups, it's JR and we're back again with more Built to Destroy. For those of you who don't know, the reason I didn't upload the second video for last week was because I had suddenly come down with a stomach bug. It did make it so I couldn't get the video up, but I am also thankful that I didn't get hit with that bug at a worse time. The time it hit me probably could have been better if it had happened the day after I uploaded the video, but either way, I still had the whole weekend to recover. Either way, I don't have any kind of update or anything else I want to address, so let's hop right into this episode. In my video titled 5 of the Biggest Mistakes in Warframe, the background gameplay consisted of me running around an endless Kuba mission, mainly using my melee. However, while I simply thought I was playing a mission to get some b-roll for the video, some of you guys were a bit too observant and noticed the melee I was using. Because so many people noticed, I figured what better weapon to build for the next build to destroy. So, here it is. Silva and Aegis Umbra. Okay, okay, it's not actually Silva and Aegis Umbra, and yes, I know I clickbaited the fuck out of this video, but can you blame me? The melee that I have renamed Silva and Aegis Umbra is actually the Tenno Sword and Shield Sigma and Octantis. I'll give you the context on why I renamed it in a bit. Sigma and Octantis comes with 60 base damage favoring slash damage, 28% crit chance with a 2.2 times crit multiplier, and 16% status chance. In addition, unlike the other Sword and Shield weapons, Sigma and Octantis has a unique attack in the form of its air melee. Instead of you simply attacking while in the air like every other melee, when you attack in mid-air, you will throw Octantis in the direction you are looking, minus looking directly downward because then you're just going to perform a slam attack. When the thrown Octantis comes in contact with an enemy, it will stumble them and open them up for a melee finisher, which makes taking out heavy units very easy. Anyway, Sigma Octantis is a weapon that is not obtainable in any normal way. While every other weapon you need to buy the blueprint, research it in a dojo, or kill a specific enemy for, to get Sigma and Octantis, you need to log into Warframe for a grand total of 700 days. Luckily, this is total days logged in and not days logged in in a row. While it is very, very time consuming to get, in the most literal way possible, I feel confident saying that it is 100% worth it. Personally, Sigma Octantis has become one of my favorite melee weapons, which is why I decided to rename it. First off, for those of you who don't know, you can rename melee weapons by going to Cetus on Earth, speaking with Hawk the Blacksmith, selecting Other Services, and by clicking Entitle, you can rename any melee you have, not just Zaws you've made. As an example, I have renamed my Sindhu Prime to Black Betty, my Hate to Yokai, and finally, Sigma and Octantis to Silva and Aegis Umbra. Now for the reason I named it that. The reason I renamed my Sigma and Octantis and accidentally fooled a bunch of people into thinking that I had the most exclusive melee in the game other than Skana Prime is because I was a huge fan of Silva and Aegis before Silva and Aegis Prime came out. Before it came out. When Sylvan Aegis Prime dropped, it was added to my list of weapons that I've used and loved in the past that got completely destroyed in my eyes when they got primed. Currently in that list are Silva and Aegis, Cernos, and Venka. Cernos is there because Cernos Prime went from a normal bow to a bow that shoots a bunch of arrows in a horizontal line without anything you can do about it. Which I f***ing hated because that was the entire reason I never used Ivara's Artemis bow. But look at that, DE released an augment mod for Artemis bow that makes it shoot one arrow, leaving Cernus Prime completely untouched and forever leaving me to use Rock to Cernus instead. Venka is in this list simply because it was given a one star ribbon disposition and that pissed me off. And finally, Silva and Aegis is in this list because... It was changed from a sword made of fire and a shield made of fire to a mace with a little bit of fire on the strike and a shield with a little bit of fire on the edges. It was changed from an average attack rate status weapon with no crit capability to one of the slowest attacking melees with 10% more crit chance, 0.5 more crit damage, and 5% more status chance. I prefer high attack rate status melees over slow crit melees. It was given a 3 star disposition as opposed to the 5 star disposition it most likely would have gotten had it not gotten a prime or if DE decided to keep it a lower damage fast status weapon like it was 
as before. And finally, if I wanted to keep the aesthetic of normal Silva and Aegis because I do not like the way Silva and Aegis Prime looks, I am forced to use the Day of the Dead Silva and Aegis skin, which I absolutely despise because I do not like the aesthetic of the Day of the Dead related stuff, namely Sugar Skulls, which this wouldn't have been an issue because I could just make some of the accents on the weapon the same color as the main part so they wouldn't show up. But there's still the issue of the fact that there's a gigantic fucking Sugar Skull right smack dab in the middle of Aegis that is completely and utterly untouchable. No matter what, you cannot remove the skull, you cannot replace the skull, you cannot recolor the skull. It is just there. So, long story short, I renamed Sigmund Octantis to Silva and Aegis Umbra because I wanted to pretend that Silva and Aegis wasn't given a variant that completely changed everything I loved about it. Anyway, Negative stuff aside, let's look at the ribbon I have. My ribbon isn't the best, but it certainly works. Sigma Noctantis Ciata adds 129% more slash damage and 166% more damage. Ideally, I would like to have attack speed and status chance over slash damage, but I'm not complaining. Much like my Plasma Sword, I gave Sigma Noctantis a hybrid crit status build with Sigma Noctantis Ciata, Primed Pressure Point, Prime Fury, and Vicious Frost, increasing my overall damage, attack speed, and adding cold damage to the mix. Then, Condition Overload, Blood Rush, Weeping Wounds, and Drifting Contact to make full use of Sigma Noctantis' crit and status capability. With this build, and my ribbon specifically, when attacking a target affected by a reasonable amount of 3 procs at a reasonable 25 times combo multiplier, Sigma Noctantis gets up to 17,297 average overall damage, and 28,956 average DPS. With that being said, let's see what Silva and Aegis Umbra can do. That's going to wrap up this episode of Built to Destroy. If you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like, and make sure to hit that subscribe button to become a pop if you haven't already. Also, if you want to support me and the channel, consider becoming a patron for as little as $1 a month. My name's JR, and I'll see you guys in the next one.